All right, guys, today we are going to learn how to do a one point perspective city. Um, for this assignment, again, you will need a pencil and a straight edge, so a ruler or a piece of cardboard that came already with a nice straight edge on it, or a thick piece of paper, something along those lines. Um, you also will need colored pencils, so uh, make sure you have those available. You can run up to the dollar store or, you know, you can get them anywhere. So please make sure you have a couple colored pencils available for you. So our one point perspective city is going to start basically the same way we did the shapes the other day. We are going to make a horizon line. Again, you can measure to make a straight line, but we are just gonna guess. I basically just kind of look at the size of this shape versus this shape to get a pretty straight line in the center. And I'm just gonna draw that line really light. You may not even be able to see it. Then I'm going to draw my vanishing point. And again, this one does not have to be in the middle. Most people do put it in the middle just for the sake of following along with the video, but you can put it off to the side a little bit and your road will just look like it's kind of going off into the, into the distance towards the side. But I'm gonna put mine just about in the middle. Again, if you wanna measure, you can. If not, no big deal. Then to make our road, we are going to take our vanishing point, put our pencil on our point, and our ruler and make a line for the road down to the left corner. And then the same thing on the right side. Start at the vanishing point. And it can go to the corner, it could go to the kind of into the corner, wherever you wanna be, this is your city. Okay, then the second thing we are gonna do is we'll just go ahead and work on the sidewalk right now since we have to do that. Um, there's a list of things that are required here, which will be in the assignment, but I put them off to the side also so you can kind of see as we're working. So to do the sidewalk, you need to create two more lines. So I'm going to take the far edge here. Every line that goes back into space is pointing to our vanishing point. So I'm gonna make the sidewalk. And if you are standing right here, hello, here's a person, obviously your head would be huge, It'd be like right here. The sidewalks are much bigger, closer to you than they are farther away. So that's how it looks in real life. Now I'm gonna make the side of the curb. So I'm just gonna pull a straight, skinnier line, come down like that. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. I'm coming out thicker actually above the line I drew so now they're kind of on both sides of the corner here and then a thin line to make the curb okay so a sidewalk has lines in it right it's not just one solid piece of concrete in most cases so any lines that are looking straight at you that you're seeing right from the front are going to be straight parallel to the bottom of the paper so my best suggestion for doing your first line of the sidewalk is to line up your ruler on the bottom edge of your paper and just on the top of the sidewalk you're going to do a straight line top top they don't have to be equal i mean you could have them staggered but you want to make sure that they're parallel to the bottom to the top of your paper so then the next sidewalk it's gonna be a little bit smaller, remember? So it's going back into space. I just move my ruler up parallel, just like when you did those shapes, and make that straight line. Now I'm gonna go back farther into space, but now my sidewalk blocks are getting smaller, so I'm not moving quite as far. And I'm just gonna continue making sure my ruler is straight, so always kind of looking at the shapes that are formed by my ruler in the paper and go back into space. So this is the top of the sidewalks. We also need to do a curb because it's not, again, just one solid piece of cement right here. Now the curb is gonna be very much like those shapes we did the other day also, except this time we're gonna go straight up and down to create a corner. So now we are parallel to the side of the paper. So really every line you make is either going back into space, parallel to the bottom or parallel to the top. So I'm going right where this line was, 
My ruler is parallel to the side and I'm making a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna go back. You wanna make sure your ruler is nice and straight each time because if it starts getting like a lean to, then your curb is not gonna look real. And do all my little curbs. Okay, come over here and do the same thing. 90 degree angle. And you can see that just a simple couple lines and now we have a three-dimensional sidewalk that's going back into space. Okay, so we have our sidewalk and we did our curb. Now we're gonna work on our buildings. So your requirements are that you have at least three buildings on each side and you have a second row. Um, you have at least two buildings that are in the second row or behind the first row of buildings. So if you were in a city, you would see buildings and buildings behind those buildings. So that's what we're trying to represent. So to make our buildings, we are gonna go start in the front here. So this is the front of us. The building is gonna probably be bigger because it's close to us. And I'm going to make a straight line from my sidewalk that's parallel to the edge of the paper again. So I'm looking at this strip because I'm not measuring it. And I'm just making sure that it's about the same size. So I'm gonna make a line going up. Here's the side of my building. I'm gonna twist my ruler to point to my vanishing point. And I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna decide how fat, how wide I want this building. I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna twist my ruler back down parallel. So we want this shape to be nice and straight and come back down to the sidewalk. So this is the front of my building. To make the side, because you will see the side, it is parallel to the top or bottom of the paper. So I hold my ruler here and I'm just sliding down till I get to this corner and I'm going off. Okay, now I'm gonna do my next building. So straight up and down, because remember if I do an angle, it's gonna look like it's falling backwards. If I go like this, it's gonna look like it's falling forward. So you wanna keep all of these lines as straight as possible. Uh, maybe I wanna go a little bit taller on this one, just because it's hmm, bigger. Go straight up, I point to the vanishing point, and I come straight down. Then I go parallel to the top of the paper, so I kind of always just bring my ruler up and I slide down to the corner. I'll slide this way so you can see it. So to this corner and I come back. Now you can either go all the way back till you meet your other building or you can twist your ruler around and come straight down so it looks like a skinny building. Okay, so I need one more building because I need three buildings on each side. So this one is gonna be a little bit smaller. Maybe I space it out a little bit more. It's farther away from us, right? Because it's getting farther down the vanishing point. And I do the same thing, straight up and down to the vanishing point and down. And then this one I'm gonna have just go straight to this other building, okay? Um, then at this point, you wanna make sure you do erase your horizon line you really don't want to see that cutting through there. That's why I said to draw it lightly. So it just kind of gives you an idea of where the horizon actually is in your drawing. Okay, so we have our first row of buildings. Now you need to do, in total, two buildings behind. So you can do one on each side since this is a small piece of paper. For that, instead of starting down here at our sidewalk, we're just going to start wherever you want to do behind. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to go up from the building. I'm going to point to the vanishing point. And this is a big building and I'm going to come straight back down making sure everything is nice and parallel. The top of my building is parallel to the top of the paper. So I slide that down. And I'm not going to take it all the way off the page because that would be a ginormous building, but I'm going to come straight back down. Okay, then you need to do windows and doors. So windows and doors are basically the same thing as doing a building. A door is gonna be straight up parallel. So make sure this is straight, the same as this line. Otherwise you have things tilting. Point to the vanishing point and straight back down. You have a door. You can add a window into it or you know, make it however you want it to look. But every time I'm pointing back into space, I am rotating so that I'm 
pointing at my vanishing point. Super important. Okay, so there's my door. To do a window. Windows are best when you start this way again and you put your one side in, straight parallel, straight up and down, and then the top and the bottom of your window is gonna point towards the vanishing point. So I point at it there, it's my vanishing point, I twist, I come to right here, make sure my ruler's lined up, point to the vanishing point, and straight down. If I wanted to make a cross in the window, straight up and down, point to the vanishing point. And after you do this a bunch of time, it just becomes like a rhythm. So every, every building should have a door and some type of window on it. Um, and you need to make sure you're doing it on both sides. So again, I'm just gonna fly through this up. Vanishing point, straight down, back. Up, vanishing point, straight down, back. Up, vanishing point, straight down, straight back, down. And one building behind, so straight up, vanishing point, straight down, back, straight down, and it all starts coming together. So again, a door would be straight up, it's just like a building, just like you're starting the top of a building, or the front of the building, I should say, to the vanishing point, straight down. Now there's lots of things you could add in. You could do bricks, you could do awnings. Um, however, for the purpose of our assignment, and since we're not in person, um, this is the requirements that is standard. You can add, certainly add things. If you wanted to make an entire brick building, every line of the brick building would just be pointing to the vanishing point. Just do a couple here. And then bricks are staggered. So you do like this, like this, like this, every other one, and then every other Okay, see the bricks go in there? Okay, not required, but an option. So after you lay out everything, you have at least three buildings on each side, check. You have at least two buildings behind, check. You got all your windows and doors. Obviously, if I had more time, I would do that. And then if you wanna add extra, you can. But once you get to the point where you have laid it all in with pencil, you are gonna color these things. Um, and color pencil, best marker would be the worst. Crayon would be your last option, um, but they do not need to be realistically colored. So when you're coloring with colored pencils, nice and light so that you don't get weird like layers and shades of color. And just lay it in real nicely. And color all your buildings, okay? You can color them whenever you want. Doesn't have to be realistic. You do neon. You can even put signs on the building as long as they're in one point perspective. And there's tons of videos online of how to do one point perspective. So if this, if you have questions and I can't answer them for you, look up some resources. Okay, so you're just gonna continue coloring. This building's orange and blue, go Tigers. Get everything nice and colored. And if you wanna be super extra, you could go over all of your lines with a Sharpie and it will look really sweet. All right, guys, there you go.